welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another one on the 30 day fishing challenge 30 day posting challenge try to get a video up one day or every single day for 30 days today we're going to be doing some drop shots uh, for crappie not something that probably a lot of people do but when these crappie are moving out to their deeper brush piles kind of that summer to fall transition here august september october uh, it's a pretty good tactic to use so i'm going to show you what i got tied on and hopefully we'll put some crappie in the boat. Let's go. All right, on the drop shot stuff, this is what we're trying to see, fish stacked up. Just kind of in open water. There's a few, uh, I have a few brush piles marked out, but they're, from what I've seen, they're really not that tight, but this is kind of what you want to see. They're just kind of spread out all over the bottom here. 21, 22 feet of water, something like that. This is what they're doing right there. This is a, yeah, that might be a clump of them. I don't think that's a brush pile. No, that might be an old one. But yeah, there we go. That's what we want to see on the 2D. Just fish stacked up all over the place. So uh, let's get up front. Throw the drop shot in the water and try to catch a bunch of them. That's what we're looking for on 2D. Right on the bottom, I'm going to show you on the live scope. They're just kind of all spread out. There's actually a brush pile beneath me, but they're not, I mean, there's a ton of small bait fish on it, but most of them are just kind of spread out. There's another brush pile. They're spread out between the brush piles is what they're doing. So we're just gonna pitch this thing out. And here's what we got set up. This is a, a, this is a quarter ounce little uh, ball drop shot. And then I have a number four. Let's pull the plastic off. This is a number four. Uh, drop shot hook by zone lock just got these in the mail and then we're going with the uh, crappie monster uppercut white and chartreuse i like these style baits these are these creature style baits for when you're doing drop shots because you never know what you're going to catch on these things crappie smallmouth walleye they all love these style of baits but today we're focusing on crappie Drop that thing down there. Does that look tasty? All right, let's pitch this thing out. And, uh, they're pretty much all over the place, so. And what's going on here? Wrapped around the tip? Of course we are. Why not? So what you always want when you start filming They're all over the place down there. I thought I had it locked up on the random set of schools. I was off too deep. And then just pitch right over the top of them. Oh, there's some taps. Kind of give it a little lift off the bottom. And you'll feel them tap it on the way down too. There's one. That feels like a good one too. I just took them funny. That's a solid eater. There we go. He's going on a live well today. That's a little ten and a quarter. There's a bunch of them down there. We got some weather coming in, so they could be pushing tighter of some brush piles. I was actually fishing them a little earlier today and they were pretty spread out. Just kind of see where all these crappie were set up and most of them were pretty spread out across the bottom here between the brush piles, but there's still fish between them. It's just, there's definitely some more fish stacked up on brush piles like because of that right there. See all these bait fish on top of it? You can barely see the brush pile now, but there's a brush pile bunch of bait fish and I don't just mean crappie I mean there's small little bait fish these crappie are feeding on they're starting to get really stacked up tight to the brush piles so hmm this front might be pushing them in we'll see hope oh, there's a tap you're just gonna kind of drag it across the bottom pick it up every once in a while and on the drop that's usually when you'll feel it just like that So you know they hit it on a drop and they suck it in just like that. It 
See you, bud. That's only about an eight inch fish. He's not going in the live well. So what you're trying to find when you're, I guess, locating these fish, right now I'm on the outside edge of a spawning flat. It kind of comes off into the point into deeper water. Now, the, there's actually brush piles, cr crappie cribs is what we call them up north, but brush piles laid out off this point and they're staggered up between, I think the shallowest one's about eight feet of water. These deeper ones are in 22, 23 feet of water. So these crappie have places to hang out for throughout all the seasons, uh, spring, summer, fall, winter. And what you're trying to do when you're trying to locate these fish, if I were to go up inside image those brush piles in like eight, 10, 12 feet of water, I, I guarantee there's probably not a lot of fish up there. When you use side imaging or even just 2D, as you saw, these crappie are so spread out on the bottom for the most part of the morning here, you just needed 2D. And as soon as you started seeing those little schools, just uh, anchor up, or in this case, throw on the spot lock and start pitching around with a drop shot. And the reason this drop shot so effective is because we're in 22, 23 feet of water. And it's, it's really hard to throw some sort of search bait, like a, a beetle spin, unless you're throwing like a quarter ounce beetle spin or even an underspin, like a big underspin maybe. But when these fish, they're not really high up in the water column. The highest ones I've seen are about 14, 15 feet down from the surface. There's a tap. There's another one. Yep, got them. So you really got to get a bait down to the bottom. He's a, this guy's a fighter. And they hit it on the fall a lot of times with this drop shot rig. So they, they really suck that bait in, as you can see. That guy's barely hooked. Popped right out. See you, buddy. As you can see, I'm just pitching it. I can pitch it wherever I want here. Even though I have live scope, even on the live scope, I see them all over the place. Um, they're not schooled up really, really tight yet. And it looks like they might get to there later in the day once this front starts pushing through. There's one. Oh no, I lost him. But they're hitting it right on the fall. And it's so key to have a bait that gets down there real quick. There's a few of them. Once he's cropped to get into deeper water, there's actually quite a few options you can use. Some bigger baits, lipless crank baits, uh, blade baits, some sort of jigging wrap, or a drop shot effect like this. Double jig setups are great. Take my plastic? No. Pulled it off though. Pulled my plastic off. But how, I mean, how you're finding them is Pretty simple, 2D is all you need. Side imaging does help, because you'll be able to see them, the big clouds of them, but 2D sonar, you'd be able to run right over these. You're looking for those deeper points from those spawning flats that go out into those lake basins, or even if you're fishing a river system, these creek channels. That's where you're gonna be finding these fish. Oh, there's one. Felt them tap it on the fall. Oh, there we go. Come on. Oh gosh, dang, Adam. Adam. What's going on here? You see him tap it? I'm just barely dragging it across the bottom now. I'm trying to get him to eat. There's one. There we go. I think it's not a big one though. White and chartreuse, two of the three colors you should always have in your tackle box. Pink, white, and chartreuse, and then a color combo of, of all of them. Like a black and chartreuse, a blue and white. Purple, pink, something like that. But pink, chartreuse, and white, those three colors you should always have in your tackle box. Because they pretty much, for everywhere I've traveled, they catch fish. When the, see either by themselves or some sort of color pattern mixture. Oh, there's one. There we go. This one get, might be going in the live well. He's a nine incher. Yep. An inch fish going in the live well. These are good eaters. Good eaters.
They are just stacked up all throughout that lake bottom, right off this edge. There's one. Got him. Oh no, he's in the. Oh shoot, he's in the brush pile. Gotta go get him now. I don't want to retie. He swam right into the brush pile. Is he still on there though? I don't know if he's still on there. I know people are gonna comment, man, that's a lot of small fish there. Yeah, up north on lakes like this where they're really close to the Twin Cities area, a lot of pressure, not a lot of water equals uh, not very many big fish. It happens. If you wanna catch some good sized crappie in Wisconsin or Minnesota, the equation is less people, more bodies of water equals bigger fish. That's pretty much how it works. If there's more people, fewer bodies of water. <laughs> Those fish don't get big. There's too much pressure on them. Oh man. Well. Oop, I think I got her. Yep, got her off. Lost the fish though. Oh my goodness. That's what I'm talking about. They are just spread off, or spread off, spread out across this entire lake bottom. And they're not really schooled up tight, as you can see. They're just random here and there. So we're gonna bump up and anchor up a little closer to them. Yeah, they're just kind of all over the place. There's one. Oh, there he was, dang it. Sometimes they're just barely tapping that tail. That's why I like going with a little bit smaller of a bait on these drop shots, because they got a finicky bite sometimes at these depths. They're not absolutely slamming it. There's one. There's one. Seems like they hit it a lot harder on that drop. After you pop it real quick and then let it drop, they, they really inhale it. That's a little guy. Little baby. One thing people ask about a lot of times is line size. So this is 20 pound braid and I have about a six foot liter of eight pound fluorocarbon. Probably could have gone lighter, um, but eight pound fluorocarbon is the lightest I had in my boat today. And it's clear fluorocarbon. You could also go with mono too, but it's just kind of the setup I use for any type of drop shot, bass, walleye, whatever I'm doing. Big old small mouth action. There's fish out there. Hopefully this front isn't shutting them down. They just shut off. There's one. Got him. Got him on the fall. Here we go. Not a big one, but starting to slow down on the bite. It's not good. There's one. <laughs> Just dropped it down there. That's a better one. He might be going in the lava. They're definitely hitting right on the drop. Instead of running up with it. He's a nine incher. And I think I got, I caught a few earlier today. I better count. Can only keep 10 on this lake, unfortunately. I know. You'd think, hmm, it's a pretty small size limit considering uh, you got some small fish. Yes, I, I would fully agree with that. Here's one. Tap, 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 come on. There he is. A little bit better one, I think. Or just a fighter. Yeah, he might be going in the live well. Well, they're not big, but it is a tactic that you can use for when these crappie get really, really deep. And they're really close to the, oh, come on, get over here. 
and they're really close to that, that lake bottom. Let's see what he is. Drop shot hook by Zone Lock, the Crappie Monster Uppercut, White and Chartreuse. I really like these uppercuts for drop shot effects. Seven and a half foot ACC, 2000 size Carbon X, PC Fun. A reel, 20 pound braid, going to a about a six foot liter of eight pound fluorocarbon. Try it out if you get to these uh, later summer months or even into fall here and these crappies start getting really deep. Um, it's a great application to use. Let me know if you have any comments or questions. You can post them in the comment section below or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. I always appreciate you watching this 30 day video challenge. We'll see ya.